Today's video is proudly sponsored by Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes. And they include all the popular distributions, such as Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and get this, even Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux-focused cloud server provider that lets you tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You could use it to host a blog, a VPN server, a Minecraft server, and much more. In fact, Linode is the platform of choice to host the entire web presence of Learn Linux TV. In addition, Linode offers 24 by 7 365 support, regardless of plan size, so you can get help from a live person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 towards your new account, and I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. And now, let's get started with today's video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys the basics of the sed command. It's one of those commands that I recommend that everyone learn, and it could be a bit tricky for some newcomers, but honestly, it's not as bad as you might think. It's quite easy to learn the basics, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach you guys the basics right now in today's video. And the basics that I'm about to teach you will serve as the foundation that you could build upon for future learning. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, maybe I should have told you guys in the beginning what the sed command even does in the first place. Sed is short for stream editor, and you can actually use it to filter and modify text. It's often used with text files to change things in place inside text files, which is one of the examples that we'll go over, but there's all kinds of things that you can use the sed command for, and we're only getting started in today's video. Offline, I went ahead and created a text file, and that text file is going to serve as the basis for the examples in today's video. And here it is. Just a random example I know, maybe I'm just hungry, I have no idea why I decided to use pizza toppings as the basis for today's video, but you know what, I did what I did, and here it is. So hypothetically, here are four different topping combinations for pizza. Now at first you actually might think that there's nothing wrong with this file. Actually, if you look closer, you'll notice that there's something extremely wrong with this file. Pineapple, yes, pineapple is listed as a topping. Heck no, we have to fix that. Now, of course, I could go into this file, I can open it via nano, vim, or whatever, and I could just manually change it. And to be honest, it wouldn't really take me that long to make the changes manually. We only have four lines inside this file that includes toppings anyway, so it might only take, what, 30 seconds? Now imagine if there were thousands of lines here. In that case, it's not really going to be all that convenient to do this manually. Let's see what the sed command can do for us. So what I'm going to do to show you the first example is I will type sed, and then I'll type single quotes. Inside the single quotes, I will type s, because I want to search for a string, and then slash, pineapple, slash, and then, I don't know, let's go with feta. And then what we need to do is give the sed command a file that we want to use for input. And I'm going to use the toppings.txt file that I showed you guys earlier. And take a look. Every occurrence of pineapple has indeed been changed to feta. It worked. Video over, you could go on about your day. It was that easy. Actually, it gets a little bit more advanced from here. Let's continue on a bit. So one thing that didn't happen is that the file itself didn't get modified. So what the sed command did here when we executed it is it used the toppings.txt file as an input file, and then it executed this find and replace against every occurrence of pineapple, and it changed every occurrence to feta. Now, 
What happened here is that it didn't actually overwrite the file. It just, well, gave me the contents of the file. The contents of the file with the changes. Now, what I could do, I'm not going to do this, but what I could do is I could simply redirect the output to a new file. I mean, that's fine and it's valid, but that's not really what I want to do here. Instead, what I want to do is change everything in place. And that's actually very easy. We just add one option here, dash I. Dash I allows us to change things in place. This time, there's no output. But we can see that there was, in fact, output. The output was the file itself. That's where the output was sent to. So we were able to change every occurrence of pineapple to feta inside the file. So, crisis resolved. Now, already, with what I've taught you, you could use this command syntax right here to do all kinds of things. I mean, anytime you want to basically find and replace something with something else, you could use this exact syntax right here. You just change the word that you're searching for, the word that you want it changed to, and then you also change the name of the file that you want to make the changes in. You include the dash I option if you want everything to be done in place. And that alone will probably serve you for more than 50% of all the use cases you might use said for. Again, there's many variations, but there's also another problem. And that problem comes in the form of a delimiter. Now let's take a closer look at the command syntax that we have right here. But what I'm going to do for this particular example is I'm going to change what it's searching for. And I'm also going to remove the dash I as well. So we've already changed every occurrence of pineapple to feta. So the word pineapple is no longer in the file. So let's try changing feta to something else. So I'm going to change every occurrence of feta to olives. And it works. But what's the problem though? I mentioned concerned about the delimiter. What does that mean? Now when it comes to said, the character that follows S is the delimiter. So as you can tell then, the slash, in our case, is the delimiter. What happens then if I change every occurrence of slash here to a space? Nothing. It still works. Okay, that's interesting. So what happens then? If I do this, again, nothing. It's fine. That's okay. That's valid. So now I'm going to change the delimiter to a period. Still fine. So it doesn't really matter what you use as the delimiter. Our original command was this one right here. Now the forward slash is the most common delimiter that you'll find, and I think every tutorial I have ever seen online uses the forward slash as the delimiter. That's standard practice. Again, nothing wrong with that, until there is something wrong with that. So what if, for example, one of the characters that you want to replace is a forward slash? Now we can get into all kinds of craziness like escaping things out and workarounds and things like that, but it's just a lot easier to actually just use a different delimiter. So if for any reason the forward slash is not working for you, because let's be honest, it's not always going to work in every use case, especially if forward slash is included in what you want to replace, then it makes sense to change the delimiter to something else. And let me try to set up an example of why you might not want to use the forward slash. So what I'm going to do is just execute the find command, and I'll start the find command in the Etsy directory. And the type of objects that I want to return are specifically files. So dash type F. And I'll press enter. So that gives me a list of paths. What I'm going to do right now is just redirect the output to a file. I'm going to ignore these permission denied errors. That doesn't really matter. And there we have the file and we have the contents. Now, let's say, for example, I want to remove something. 
And you could do that with set as well. You can actually remove something. And let's say, for example, I want to remove this right here. I want to show only what's after slash Etsy. There's many different ways that we can do this. And I'm not going to get into all the individual ways. I'm just going to set up an example where we want to remove something. And what we want to remove includes a slash, as you see here. So how do we actually write a statement that includes a forward slash? Well, you probably already know because I kind of already gave it away. But what we can't do I mean, that's not going to work very well. In fact, it doesn't work at all. As you can see, I'm not really able to use the forward slash here and use it as a thing I want to search for because I'm using forward slash as a delimiter. That's a little confusing. And specifically what I'm doing is I'm searching for slash Etsy and I want to replace it with something. I want to replace it with nothing because what I want to replace it with should be in here, but it's not. As an aside, if I go back to our earlier example, as you can see, I'm able to replace feta with olives, but what I'm also able to do, and this is what I was trying to do earlier, I can replace it with nothing. It doesn't look all that great, especially right here, but you get the idea. I can essentially use said to remove something. But that didn't work right here because, again, what I want to remove has a forward slash in it. That's going to confuse the command. And that's an example of a situation where you might want to use a different delimiter. And here's that failed command again. And I gotta be honest, it's a little hard to read. So let's go ahead and fix this up. What I'm going to do is use a different delimiter. I'm going to use a period. I'll press enter. And it worked. On the far left hand side, you don't see slash Etsy on any of these lines right here. Let's recall the command again. So we have the said command. We're going to search for a string. And like I mentioned, the character that directly follows the S becomes the delimiter. So now a dot, as you see here, is going to be used as the delimiter. We're going to search the file for slash Etsy. Here we have another delimiter. After this delimiter, right in between these two dots right here, we're supposed to type what we want it to be changed to. So for example, I could just type a random word in there. And as you can see, it went ahead and put that all the way there on the left. But if we don't include anything at all, as far as what we want to replace each occurrence with, then it's just going to replace it with nothing. As you see here, it essentially stripped that off the left hand side of the file. And that's an example of when you might want to use a different delimiter. Now, normally, you'll probably want to stick with forward slashes most of the time. But again, like you just saw, you'll more than likely, at least eventually, run into a situation where you'll need to use a different delimiter when you use said. And, well, be prepared to have a little bit of fun with it. So as you can see here, I took an echo statement. I simply echoed hello. But instead of stopping right there and letting hello print right on the screen, I piped that right into the said command, replacing in real time the word hello with goodbye. The word goodbye is the word that was printed because before it had a chance to even show up on the screen, we replaced hello with goodbye, as you can see right here. So there you go. I just showed you guys the basics of the said command. And I know this video was a little shorter than most, especially in this series, but I think it's important to understand the basics because that sets the foundation for the future. And now you understand the basics of the said command. You can certainly use it any time it makes sense to do so, especially when you want to replace text with other text. That's the greatest use case right there. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.